opportunity to come into God's presence together and worship him. The Bible says in Psalm 100 verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Why did you come this morning? Are you here to worship the Lord? Are you here to give him your praise and to hear from him? and to hear his word and to, to grow in your knowledge and understanding of who he is. I hope so. And to have fellowship one with another and to pray for one another and uplift each other. And your praise to God does that for the people around you. So let's praise him together. Heavenly Father, we, we come before you this morning and we pray, Lord God, that we would enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise, Lord Jesus. Um, we thank you, Jesus, that through you, we are welcomed into your throne room, and we are welcomed to bring our requests to you and um, share with you what is heavy on our hearts, and we are welcomed to remember all that you've done for us um, in our lives and this week and this day even, giving us new breath and new life and new mercies, Lord Jesus, and forgiveness and a fresh start, Lord God, to a day. And so we give you all the praise and we pray, Lord, that you would enable us and help us to um, enter into your presence, Lord God, and just focus on you today. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to start with a song. Feel free to clap. We're going to sing about how God is great. Thank you. 
Jesus Messiah. Messiah, it's a funny word for those who are maybe new to church. Messiah um, refers to the anointed one, the savior that was to come in the world, the promised savior. So when we sing Jesus Messiah, we're singing Jesus, the promised savior, and he did come and he died and he rose again. So that's what that word means.
sacrifice you gave, Lord, so that our sins could be forgiven, Lord Jesus. You knew no sin, but you made yourself sin. You carried the whole sin of the world upon yourself. You took the punishment we deserved, Lord God, so that we could be set free, Lord Jesus, so that we could live lives to the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm 
known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have in the goodness of God. together in your presence, Lord. It's so sweet. Lord Jesus, how sweet it is to just be close to you, Lord, to focus all our attention on you, Lord, to remember your love for each one of us. You made us and you love us so much. You want us to have a close relationship with you. So Jesus, you came that our sins might be blotted out so that everything blocking us from you, Lord, would be covered by your blood and we could enter into your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this gift. We love you, Lord, today, and we pray that you'd open our hearts to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Can I put this back on? <laughs> 
Red means gone. Okay, red means on. All right. Good morning. Good morning. You notice I'm not Brian? Yes. All right. No. <laughs> I don't, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Tim said I should I should do this every once in a while make you feel like Brian's here. So um, yeah, Brian's away enjoying himself. He needs a break. Um, he preaches three times every Sunday. That's why he the way he is. Right, he's getting more lion's mane to get himself going for the fall. So, uh, pray for them, Nat and, and Brian. Uh, they enjoy their vacation, have a great time. He gets rested, and he can come back and just lead us all for this fall. So today, I want to talk about love. Okay, and we know we know the world knows what love, what they think love is. I know when I was a kid, uh, this is my age, last century, uh, the Sears catalog. Do you remember that? As a kid, I couldn't wait for Christmas, right? The wish book came. I had every, my classmates, we had everything memorized. What we wanted. All the things we had to have, right? We loved those things. All the Star Wars, He-Man, all the crazy stuff. The weirder, the better, right? But it didn't take long after Christmas for that excitement, that love of that object to disappear, right? You had the toys. You play with them, right? You maybe play for a little longer than some other ones. But it was in the toy box. It was lost. Worst thing is when you get kids, and my oldest wanted this thing called a poochie dog. I, it's a robotic dog, right? Oh, you remember? Okay, some people remember. Yeah. So I, I told my wife, yes, I'll go buy it for her, right? Like a good husband, I waited two weeks before Christmas to buy it. Couldn't find it anywhere in Newmark and Aurora, right? Thankfully, Keswick, I, I, I didn't tell her, of course. I didn't tell her I couldn't find it. I didn't want to get killed. So I'm panicking, going to every store. I, I go to Keswick, the Canadian town in Keswick, and I, I walk back there praying, you know, I, I need to find it. The guy's opening up a box, a whole box of them. I get the one she wants, the color. She had a certain color she wanted, right? I'm relieved. Thank you, Lord. I'm not dead. It's going to be a good Christmas. My wife's not going to tell me. You should have done it, like I said, blah, blah, blah. All that, all that stuff, right? I didn't listen. So I get it for her. She plays with it. A week later, she's never touched it again. All right? My other daughter, she's here. She wanted a hamster. Okay? My oldest one, she had her cat. The youngest one, she wants, you know, and Taylor, she's very, she wants it, she wants it. So she wanted a hamster. So, okay, she wanted it. They're away, the thing's only last two years, right? Two years old. And so they go away for a weekend, I go in there and the thing's dead. I think, oh man, poor girl, she's going to be upset. You know, her hamster's dead. I call her up. Hey Taylor, your hamster didn't make it. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? I find out she knew it was dead, but she left anyways. <laughs> she tells me years later, I hated that thing. I go, why'd you want it? Oh, I wanted it at the moment, but then afterwards I, I hated that thing. It made a mess in my room. Kids, right? So we, we love things, but we, we love them for a certain time. And we see them today, well, the world, right? The, how, what's the, what's the, the requirement to date somebody today or be with somebody today? You have to have this, 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 and this. What can I get out of this to love you? And that's a problem with the world. The world is saying, I will love this. You know, I love the toys because what I got, oh, I got the coolest toy. I can brag about it. Play with it, then I'm bored. It didn't give me anything else. So we see the world, it, the love of the world today is, what can I get from this? What can I get from it? What, how can it serve me? How can I brag about it? How can I boast about it? It's not a real love. And that's what we want to talk about today. And what we want to, as we go through this passage, it, it, for us to understand, you know, what in God says, love me, what does that mean? And even though you come to church, maybe your whole life, you may not understand it. We're in this story, it's going to show you there's two different people. One that gets it and one doesn't. The one that doesn't knew better. And so that's why I hope today that we do love God the way he asks us to love him. Right? And the world, there's so many distractions, so many things that wants our love. And that's the thing. The more things you have, the less love you can have. The more toys you have, more things. We went to, uh, I remember I went to Peru with our, the other church we, went to, uh, we used to go to uh, for a mission trip. Man, those people love. 
They had nothing. Dirt floor, no bathroom in the house. You go there, they give you, you know, anything they could scrape out, they would give you. They were so happy that we were there. We're a bunch of white people from Canada. We're thinking, why do you care about us? We're nobody. But they were, they were just, they felt blessed that we were there. And they wanted to give us, you know, welcome their house. Give, they would go buy a two liter bottle of Coke. They couldn't afford it. But you were a guest. We had to get you something. They loved, and the, the one pastor, he, he was reading, we, we wanted to go and bless them. We wanted to bring them, these are people that couldn't go to church because they were sick, didn't have, you know. And the medical system isn't, there was nothing there, right? So we wanted to go bless them, bring them some food, pray over them. The pastor starts reading another scripture. The lady starts saying it verbatim. She's memorized most of scripture, right? The love that she showed us, it, it, made, it made us feel bad. Like we, we were humbled by going there. Less you have, the more you can love God, right? That's the thing the world's trying to, Satan's trying to get us to love things of this world so that we don't have time to love God. So that's my hope that we see the difference. We can be convicted of it. And that we can go up today and we can love God the way he's asked us to love him. So we're going to be in Luke 7, 36 to 15. I'm going to read all those and then we'll go through it together again. So Luke 7, 36. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at, at the table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner... When she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the oil. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is, who, this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered him, and, sorry, Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. A certain moneylender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the, the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one, I suppose, for whom he canceled, canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning, turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil. But she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who would forgive sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Let's pray. God, we, we come here, God, to praise you, to worship you, God, to love you. God, we just pray as we open your word, Lord, take the distractions that are mind in our hearts, God, to open our heart to hear your word, God, to hear your message, to hear your spirit, God, to, to learn how to love you more, God. We just pray that we are, Lord, just encouraged and blessed by your words today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we see here in Luke, a Pharisee asked Jesus over to his house for a meal. And in, that, in those times, a meal, you'd go in around the table, there'd be pillows, you'd lay on your left side, on your left elbow, your feet behind you, and you'd eat the food with your right hand. I don't know if it's any better than what we do today, but that's the culture back then. So that's what, how they were sitting. they go on the table. Um, that's why she could you know, cry, stand behind him and cry on his feet. So what we see here is they're in the house, and this woman, was she invited to the house? No. She heard. I don't know where she, she heard about Jesus. She knows who Jesus is. But she heard that he was invited to the Pharisee's house, that he's in there. Pretty awkward, I would think, for the Pharisee, for this woman to come in. Especially in his mind, what kind of woman she was. But she didn't care. She came to the house because she wanted to see Jesus. She didn't care the consequence of what they'd say. She, her one focus was Jesus. How does she go and see Jesus? He's here. 
And so we see that, you know, this woman, there's other uh, stories in the, in the Gospels about women in alabaster uh, oil. This is a different one. So the, the kind of recollection, this is a different story. But this woman, she's called a woman of the city. She's a sinner. And Jesus said she has many sins. Some people would say she's a prostitute. It doesn't say that. I think her hair was down. And in the Jewish times in that time, if you were a married woman, as a Jewish woman, your hair was always up in public. It didn't go down. So they would say the prostitutes would have their hair down. And that was one of the ways you could distinguish that. But we don't know that. And even if she was, it's good not to judge her for that. Because what happens is, and the same thing as this Pharisee did, we think, oh, she's this or she's that. Well, I'm better than that, right? Or, you know, like, yeah, of course she's a sinner. Because she, well, she, who would ever do these things? This is a greater sin. So she's just a woman, a sinful woman. We're all sinful. And for us, as we go through this, remember that none of us have less sins than others. We've all committed the same sins. We know you've broken one law, you've broken them all. Okay? And so when we look at this woman... Don't look at what, don't worry about what her sins were, what she, her occupation was, what she was doing. Let's focus on her heart, where her love is. You know, it's, you know, and he, he um, sorry, I'm trying to hear. So this woman goes in the house. She wants to see Jesus. And the alabaster oil isn't cheap, right? In that time, it could, it would, it could be a price of a wage of a, of a working man, a yearly wage, right? So... A lot of money, right? So they, they said in, in those times around three hundred dollars, three hundred denarii, was about what a working man would make in a year. So it wasn't cheap, and we see why Judas Iscariot and the other stories where that's presented to Jesus. He said, "Why don't we sell this? It's a lot of money." He wanted the money for himself. We know that he would steal from the, 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 the coffers, right? He would take the money that Jesus collected for others. So this wasn't cheap. So this lady came in with something very expensive. So take whatever it is your wage is, think of that. That's what she brought to Jesus. So as she comes in, she comes to Jesus. She stands behind him, weeping. Weeping so much that his feet are getting wet. Why is she weeping so much? Why so many tears? I think she's broken. She knows who Jesus is. She wouldn't randomly walk into someone's house for anybody else. Right? We wouldn't do that, would we? We wouldn't walk in somebody's house and go, oh, you know what? Matt's over here. I'm just going to go walk in. He's having, a, he's having at someone's house. They're having him over for dinner. I'm just going to walk in and say hi. What would people think of me? Why are you here? Right? Why, you're rude. What are you doing? Why are you here? You weren't invited. Right? Even if I was invited, I would say, why are you here? But, you know, you wouldn't do that. She, she was broken because of Jesus. And we see that brokenness in her tears. There, she was crying so much that she, she was getting his feet wet. She was wiping his feet. Right? She kissed his feet. She anointed his feet. Right? With the ointment. She was showing love to Jesus. And we know her sins were great. And she knew that it was Jesus that would forgive her her sins for how great they were. Whatever she was doing, he would forgive all of her sins. And she was broken by that. She was humbled by that. She understood who he was. And then she was coming to love him. Now we see the Pharisee in verse 39. And now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, he's thinking, if this man were a prophet, if Jesus was an actual prophet, if he was actually who he said he was, he would know who she was what kind of woman she was. And she's touching him. That's awful. Why would he let her touch him? I wouldn't, he's thinking, I wouldn't do this. She's a sinner. A little bit of judgment there, right? He's calling her a sinner. He's judging her for her actions. And if Jesus was the man he said he was, he would never have done this. Because, no, if Jesus was Messiah, he would never let a sinner touch him like that. Isn't that crazy? We have a prophet here, a man who knows God's word. The Jewish culture, they know Jesus. They know God. They've studied it. They've immersed themselves into the word of God. And if, he's a, if he is a, a Pharisee, 
He has studied the Old Testament back and forth. He knows it. But we see the problem is here. In John 5, 42 to 43, Jesus is telling Pharisees and the Sadducees, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. Jesus is telling them, you do not love my Father. Because you do not love my Father, you do not love me. You'd rather love somebody else, anybody else than me. They missed it. The Pharisees know God. They're supposed to know God. They're supposed to know his word. But they missed it. And it's evident by their love. We see out through the, the Gospels the love they didn't have for one another. They didn't love their neighbor. They didn't love their own kind. Those who were sick. Those who were poor. The Samaritans. And then the Gentiles. They were supposed to be priests of all nations. They didn't love others because they didn't love God. And how can that happen? They went to the temple. They gave their sacrifices. They know his word. But if you don't think you need Jesus, you're never going to love him. If you think your sins are few, you're never going to love him. Because you don't need him. These Pharisees got in a spot that they thought they didn't need God, that God needed them. They were better. They were the shiny people. They were the ones that walked around perfect, rich. Right? God poured all his blessings. Right? Those who, you know, we see the churches that think, yeah, you know what? God's going to bless you with material things. That's the same mindset. Hey, God, give it to me. I need it. I deserve it. I give a little bit, but you're going to give me back more. They're loving God for what they can get out of God. That's the same as the Pharisees. They only love God because of what God was going to give it back to them. This woman didn't. She didn't. She, God gave, paid, God, Jesus gave her something. The greatest thing ever. She wasn't asking for anything else. She was broken because of that. And she showed her love to him. She was coming to give him the oil. The, 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 it's a weep. She couldn't even say anything because of her tears. Because of her heart broken. Because of Christ, his love for her. And that's the love we need to learn. And with Simon, thinking that, and that's the thing, if it's in his head, it's in his heart. It's going to be shown. He's not going to love others. I'm surprised he didn't kick this lady out. He didn't, thankfully, because Jesus had a point to show Simon. And so Jesus, obviously, right? Jesus, as the Messiah, knows what Simon's thinking. He knows that this is going through Simon's head. That Simon is judging this woman, saying, oh, you're, you're, not gonna, you're not a prophet. Why would you let a woman touch you? So Jesus perfectly says, Simon, I have something to say to you in verse 40. And he answered, say it, teacher. And Jesus goes in to this parable saying there's, there's two debtors to the same person. One owes 500 denarii, the other 50. So about a year and a half wages. The other 50. A few months. If, the, if the, the person they owe the money to forgave them both, said, hey, they're both forgiven, who would love that master the most? And so, I mean, he, he, he gets frightened. He said, the one that owed the most debt. Jesus is pointing to the both of their hearts. That woman's heart and his heart. He thought he didn't have a lot of debt. She knew she had a lot of debt. And for us to look at her, what, listen, I, I did this through COVID because through COVID we had lots of time. So uh, I was thinking, where would I be if I didn't know Jesus? What would I be doing? What are we caught up in? And, and examine your heart. Examine yourself. What are, what are the things that tempt you? What are the things that you struggle with? If Christ, if the Spirit wasn't there to convict you, to stop you, where would you be? It's scary. We'd be with, we'd be with the world. We'd be indulged with the world. Lost. Loving things that have no love back. Loving things that have no power over sin. And that's the problem with Simon. He doesn't understand his sin. He doesn't think he's sinned. He doesn't think that he's done anything wrong. And without that conviction, without that love, without that humbleness, without that brokenness, 
He can't love the way Christ loved us. And so he can't share that love. And so we see here, Jesus says to him in verse 44, do you see this woman? He goes, I entered your house. You gave me no water, water to wash my feet. That was a custom. You come in because the sandals, the feet are dirty, right? Today, you come in someone's house, your feet are, you know, I think all of us, everyone takes their shoes off, right? But if your feet are, shoes are muddy, you take them off because you don't want to walk through a guest house and have to track mud. If someone came to your house today, what do you do? You answer the door, you welcome them. If they have a jacket, you often take the jacket off, you bring them in the house, you, offer, you show them where they can sit, show them where the bathroom is, offer them a drink, right? Because... You, you, you love the person who's coming in. You want to make them feel at home. You want to give what you have to them as a guest. We see Simon didn't do that. Jesus calls him out. You gave me no kiss. When I came in, she's given me, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. She's washed her feet with, my, with her tears and wiped them off her hair. You did not anoint my head with oil. She's anointed my feet with ointment. That's why he says her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Simon has no love. And we see how in Matthew 22, it says here in 37, and he said to them, to him, sorry, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If we do not love Jesus Christ with everything we have, we can't love our neighbor. It's evident. If we don't love God with everything, we can't love anybody else. The way you love your neighbor, your spouse, your kids, your friends, whoever, you only can love them as much as you love God. That's just the way it is. If our heart isn't broken, we don't love God with every ounce of ourselves. We're not convicted. The Spirit's not working in us. The people that we don't, we don't like, the ones that don't like us, how can we love them? How can we show them the difference if we don't have the love of God in us? The person that you, that just gets under your skin, do you, can you still love them? Right, kind of a hot bucket, but, a button topic is, if, if you got to sit down with Justin Trudeau, I know, what would, you, would you share Jesus with him or would you give him an earful? Right? It's, it's, it's hard, right? Where it's emotion, but, uh, you're probably, <laughs> but, right? But what does, he, what does Justin need to hear? Jesus. Jesus. Does it matter how much money he's taken in my pocket? Or does he need to hear Jesus? So the person that you can't stand the most, can you love them the way God has loved you? Because God loved you when we, we hated him all. Every one of us hated Jesus. We didn't want him. We, we, we did, our sins were against him. We wanted to. We didn't want him one bit. Yet he came, served us, and died for us. And that's what he's asking us to do. If you love me the same way I love you, you'll love your neighbor. And that's how our neighbor sees Jesus Christ. It's not easy. That's why we need God every day. That's why we need to abide in him, like Brian was talking about, through John. We have to be with Christ. We have to be with him every day so that his love throws, goes through us and we can love others. Because at the end of the day, when we stand before God... What do we want him to say? Well done. We want to say, yeah, I told everyone I could. And in those moments, we may mess up, but Christ is there to work on us. Right? I, you know, I see people who post stuff online that it's, it's not love in their heart when they post these things about others. And I know they're Christians. Or they, come, they, they claim to be. And what's the world see? If we're putting posts out there or stickers on our car that show hate to a certain person, the world sees, oh, they're just like us. They're no different than us. Right? God is love. And we need to be that if we are following him. And when we do that, we can forgive the government for what they do. Our government's a lot better than the government that Jesus grew, was, grew up with. Right? He still loved them. Right? He didn't say, take your sword and, and take them out. Jesus with this woman. Her sins are great. Jesus still loved her. Because of her heart. And that's the difference you see here with Simon. His heart wasn't there. And so for us, 
what do we love? What are we loving today? And it's easy. This world, we, we're just saturated with everything. Everything wants our attention, wants our love, wants our time. Is it our phone? It, you know, it, it, all of us are guilty. I'm not saying, you know, any one of us here has got to figure it out yet. But we've got to keep looking each day. What's drawing our attention away from God? What would you rather do than spend time with God? Then that's the red flag. That thing you love more than Him. And think, why do I love that more? It's okay to have things. It's okay to have hobbies. It's okay to, you know, enjoy yourself in this life. We have a lot of things that we can do. But they're taking time away from God. And, were well, you willing to stop the person that you don't want to? Are you willing to pick up the phone to the person that you don't want to? Are you willing to tell them about Jesus? Your workplace, wherever it may be. That person that just gets under your skin. That person that's always against you. Are you willing to do what Jesus did for you? And when you're struggling, because you will. We all have those people. Right? In this world. It's a sinful world. And when people see you living for Christ, it makes them feel bad. They get jealous. They want you to be like them. And when the, those times when you're, when you're, you're struggling and you, you, under, you, don't, you just say, Lord, I can't do it. I can't stand them. I just, I just wish the worst for them. Remember what Christ did for you, has done for you, is doing for you. The sins that you committed against him, how he washed them away. That helps us. That humbles us again. And, and if I can tell you anything, don't, if someone is doing that to you, it's not about you. It's about them. The broken. Okay? Their insecurities, their fears, their issues that they're dealing with, they're projecting on us. Okay? So don't take it personally. Okay? Christ did. He still went and died for us. Because our sins are many. And we need to remember that each day. Remember how great God is. How he walked that path to Calvary for us. But we didn't want him. We didn't think we needed him. But he did. Because he knew better. And for us, for us to know better too. That person is hurting. That person, if they don't know Jesus, don't expect them to do anything good. They know their God, which is this world. They're following their God, which is this world. They need to see something different. They need to see the true love and hope. And if we can't tell them, where are they going to hear it? Let God use you. Let God bless you by spreading his word to others. And you're going to see. It may be the hundredth person you talk to. But it's okay. Don't worry about it. You'll see the joy, the fulfillment. You'll see how God is alive when somebody changes, walks away from their sin and changes their life for him. Amen. And it's not the words you say, it's the words that God says through you to them. And God's going to use you so that they see him. And that's true fulfillment. That's true joy. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell Simon. That he missed, like the other Pharisees who followed the same mindset. You missed it. You missed me. You don't even know me. You think you do. But because you don't love your neighbor, shows that you do not love me. And so for us, do we love our neighbor? Do we love those around us? Are we, or is our heart aching for those? Are we willing to share, when we have the opportunities, to share Jesus with them? And so that's, that's, what, uh, that's my hope today. And I think all of us, right? And I see this church. This, is, this church, the love that goes through here. The ministries here. The service to this community. That's great. That's people see the love of God here. And that's what we need to continue to do and keep doing in our lives. And for us to keep growing that love, keep showing that love to others. Because then more people will see Jesus here. Because it's not about us. Any of the staff here, it's not about us. It's Jesus. That's all people should remember when they walk through the stories of Jesus Christ. Because that's the only one who's worth following and being with. When you come to church, it's not for the people. It's for Christ. If it's for the people, you'll leave because someone's going to hurt you. We're still broken people. We're still capable of sinning and hurting each other. The difference is we're called to make that restoration. We're called to say, hey, can you please forgive me? And then when we do that, we see Christ in that action. If you come here for Jesus, it doesn't matter what others do. You're here for him. Our focus should be, every time we come here and we're with others, it's always God. Our focus is love others, pour into others. 
We can love others without saying a word. By our actions, what we do, how we, you know, just a smile, opening a door, opens conversations. So each day, how can we love God? We need time with Him. We need to spend our time every day with God. Through the day, praying to Him, talking to Him. Letting Him lead you. Let's pray. God, again, we, oh, we're humbled by you, God. God, we thank you so much that you are not like us, that you are who you say you are. God, that you came in Christ and you came to this earth and you, to a people that didn't want you, your own people. And God, how you still walked that path, that road for us, knowing that when we saw you, we would be broken, that we would come to you, running to you, God. And so we thank you, God, for that. We thank you, Jesus, for your death your resurrection for us, and we have that hope. We know we'll be with you for eternity, God. And Lord, you don't leave us there, but God, you're with us each and every day. So God, work in our hearts, your spirit to, to, to lead us each day to God, to share that love to others. Lord, work on us for those that we don't love, God, the one that we struggle with. God, to love them, to say the words we need to say to them, God, not to show hate to any group or any, any kind of individuals, Lord, but we, Lord, can just show love to everyone. Not to allow things of this world to get under our skin. Not allow things taken from us, Lord. To, for us to have a hard heart against those that we should. Because our hope, our time is not here, God. It's with you in eternity for our God. God, make that our dream, oh God. Make that our, our focus each day that we think about that, God. Our time with you in heaven. And that's where our aim is to go, God. And for us to be there in that glory to see you each and every day, God. We thank you for this church, God. We thank you for the people here, the hearts that they, you've worked on, God. We just pray that we continue to do this. We continue to have a love for the, this community that's so lost, God, that needs you. God, use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Duane. I'm so thankful our youth have this solid teaching every week, okay? Isn't that amazing? Praise the Lord. Please stand. We're going to go thinking about how good God is. And in the same line as, as Pastor Dwayne's sermon, when we think on how good he is, we can share his goodness with others, right? His love with others. How good of God.
Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. God bless. And uh, we'll see you tonight at 6.